What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Star Wars ASMR. Last week we heard Kylo Ren force choke a womp rat. Wasn't that nice? And this week we're going to listen to water boil from a lightsaber. Stay tuned for all this and more. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Electric Productions. I'm Jay and today I am bringing you... <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm bringing you Star Wars Battlefront 2, specifically arcade mode. I have been so excited for this title, I was really looking forward to it. Uh, I really liked the last Star Wars Battlefront. I found it to be a bit of a throwaway title for me. I enjoyed it for a few months, and then I was done with it. And it was nothing intrinsically wrong with the game. It was very arcadey for being a first-person, mostly competitive online shooter. And, uh, you know, it just, it was okay. It was a lot of fun for when I was playing it, but it wasn't something that I continued to feel drawn and back to for the long haul. And then they added bots much later on after it had been released, and I was really excited about that, but that mode was just really, really light on content. You couldn't really choose your loadouts. You could only choose from like three predetermined loadouts. You could only do it on certain maps, certain mission types. It was very, very limited. And I found that to be disappointing because I thought they had a lot of potential there for putting some longevity into the title for people that didn't want to continue to play it as strictly a PvP online multiplayer game only. But, uh, you know, when I heard that Star Wars Battlefront 2 was coming out, the first thing I wanted to know was, are they going to include bots so that I can sit there after a long day, come home and, you know, throw the title on and just relax a little bit and enjoy playing at my pace. And... You know, they said that at first it was undecided, and then they said they were going to release arcade mode, and I was so stoked. Oh, I was so excited. I was like, yes, this is it, the chosen one, the thing that's going to make this game just the perfect title for me. And then all the controversy started coming out with the loot crates and the microtransactions and the way that they were trying to push this stuff and that your upgrades for your characters was tied to this, and oh, I have the headache that set in, and I was like, well, that's it, I'm done, I'm not getting it. And then I continued to watch to see what they were going to do with arcade mode, and then I found out that you could indeed earn credits uh, for loot crates in the arcade mode. And I was like, yes, perfect, this is exact, you know, I don't like the loot crate idea, I really don't, as far as being having your progression tied to it, but I can live with that if I can sit there and earn even like one loot crate a day, and, you know, then it's just something I can come back and play every day a little bit, and that works for me. That's perfect. And then it came out that they were going to be locking uh, how many credits you could earn a day and then putting a timer on it before you could earn more. I was still okay with this concept because I understood that they didn't want people just to go in and grind the arcade mode, unlock unlock everything, and then go into PvP and just be just just rolling people. And that's that was fine. I was like, as long as there's a reasonable amount of credits, if you could even earn just the one loot crate a day worth of credits, that's fine. I'm okay with that. You know, I don't like it, but I can live with it. And if, for me, it will make the, the title worth a purchase. I was looking for more information on it. I couldn't really find the information I was looking for. I mulled it over a lot, and I finally, I bit the bullet, I bought the game. And unfortunately, I have to say that... If you're looking to just to buy this for just the arcade mode, like I was, don't do it. That's that's my recommendation. Is there some fun to be had? Yes, but it is. You will be frustrated most of the time with just the way that the game is set up. Um, you'll enjoy some individual matches and parts of matches, but you're going to be frustrated overall with the way that EA has handled this. They have this just this. This sickness, this disease of greed, just permeates this entire this entire title, uh, from front to back. And unfortunately, arcade mode does not escape unscathed, and really, it doesn't escape at all. Uh, it's it gets totally sucked up into the vortex of EA's greed. So I will just show you really quick here. So loot crates are tied to your progression in the game. You getting better, well, your character being better, I should say, is tied to this. And a trooper crate, which is what you're going to be playing as most of the time, is 4,000 in-game credits. You get 500 credits before you're locked out behind this time wall. There's been different reports on how long that time wall goes for. If you ask me, what it seems like is it's tied to a time on EA's server, not your 
uh, specific profile. So it's not like, you know, if you start playing the game at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, um, you know, and you hit your max credits, well then, 12 hours later or 8 hours later. No, it's whatever time EA servers unlock the ability to earn more uh, credits. That's what it seems like because people have been reporting different times. So I think that's what it is. I'm not sure. I'm just just guessing. So it seems like you can earn that 500 credits, uh, which means if it's I'm not sure if that unlocks just once a day or twice a day. It sounds like it's just once a day that unlocks, which means at 500 credits a day, it's going to take you eight days to earn a crate. Guys, that's unacceptable. I don't know what the heck you, you're thinking, EA. I don't know what you're... I, somebody just seriously just needs to take those guys and give them a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious, though. That's ridiculous. You are just... And to say that you're trying to, like, oh, well, we don't want people to abuse the system. Abusing the system would be earning more than one crate a day. Okay? Abusing the system would be earning more than five crates a day. However many crates you can earn online is how many you should be able to earn in Arcade. And if you're really that worried about it, EA, then have separate... Uh, an online profile and a Arcade mode profile. A PvP profile and a, a PvE profile. If that's what you're really worried about. But you're not worried about that, are you? No, you're not. You're worried about the fact that you don't want people enjoying everything the game has to offer without paying you more than what they already paid for at first. All I can say is that I hope you are treated, EA, people who have made this decision, that you are treated exactly the same way that you have treated your fans. People who have supported you. People who have said, we, we appreciate the games you're bringing to us. You have treated them so poorly, so greedily, so sneakily. And all I can say is, it is my deepest desire to see you treated the very same way in your lives. I hope that on you. I do. I really do. So, getting back to the game. Sorry for that little tangent there. It's just, it's very upsetting. So when you go into arcade mode... You've got tutorial, which is just a throwaway. Battle scenarios, which I'm very unimpressed with. I'll tell you what they are. You've got light side, dark side. You've got eight per light side and eight for the dark side. And then under each scenario, there are three different variants of that scenario. So in this one, you know, it's 50 troopers, eight versus eight. It's basically um, just team deathmatch. Then the next round, the enemy difficulty is bumped up to normal with faster ability recharge for you and weaker AI overall. And then finally, it's 75 troopers available, so a longer battle, but it's 8 versus 12, so you're outmatched as far as numbers go. And then there's no abilities, so you can't use anything. You've got half of your health, and the AI is weaker, so it's a much more challenging battle. I had You're still not going to have any issues with it whatsoever. So these are very much just kind of throwaway. Um, I, I just, yeah, the constraints that are on them and stuff just make it less enjoyable. The custom arcade is where it's at, and the custom arcade mode's a lot of fun. There's only two match types, though, team match and onslaught. So your team battle is just team deathmatch with your seven maps that are available to you and a number of tweaks that you can do, um, changing difficulty, AI difficulty, size, uh, the quantity of troops that are being pulled from. You name it, it's, it's on there. AI health, uh, player health, you can tweak that team deathmatch to your liking but just know that once you hit those 500 credits that's it you're playing just for fun and at the end of every single match they remind you you're not earning any credits it's not even like they can just shut up about it it's got to be oh well match is over but you didn't earn any credits thanks ea yeah thank you for just rubbing our face in that incessantly so the other mode for custom arcade is onslaught onslaught i will show you very very quickly here and what we're going to do is we're going to start the time. So the start time is how much time the game match starts with. So there's a minute 30 and it starts ticking down from there. We have to just kill 50 people. If we kill 50 within a minute 30, we win. If we don't kill 50 within a minute 30, we lose. You can die and respawn. That's not a winning or losing factor. Unless you turn on down here, last stand. Then you've got one life and that's it. So you could play as heroes, troopers, or a mixture of both. Enemy difficulty, I've got it set to normal. Onslaught intensity is how often the waves of enemies come in. So if you turn out to extreme, you're going to get swamped very quickly. And if you want to get swamped, then by all means. The elimination bonus is the other big key here. So every kill you get, 
this adds to the timer. So I've got where every kill I get will add three seconds to that minute 30, uh, or wherever it's at in its countdown. Last stand, like I said, you get one life. Ability recharge, I've got it set to fast, which is just fun. I mean, you know, you just, you can get in there and you can throw grenades more often and things like that. Player health, I've got doubled, and enemy health I've got as one hit, so it feels more like a traditional Star Wars movie battle where there's blaster fire going everywhere and bodies are flying and you just feel like, you know, you're just, well, you feel awesome. And enemy class, any, and minimap precise. And then we hit play from there. You can change the faction as well. So you can play as the rebels or you can play as the, um, the Imperials. And yes, the graphics are gorgeous. Yes, the sound is phenomenal. Nobody was questioning that. That was never, there was never any doubt that that was gonna be the case. So for this mode, it's just you. You don't have any backup of any kind. All right. So already doing pretty good here. Oh, get away from the grenade. Got to be careful inside these buildings because you can quickly get where you're just surrounded. One of the things I like to do is try to kite some of these little guys until I've got a good collection of them set up. And then throw a grenade. Ta-da! <laughs> His body was stuck in the door. Overall, um, I've actually seen a few more glitches than I was expecting. Um, it's not it's not horrific or anything, but yeah, you'll you'll still see a fair amount of glitches occurring. Let's get out the uh, shotgun. And the shotgun's a lot of fun because it actually increases your character's speed as well, so that's kind of neat. And then we pull out the special trooper. This guy's a blast. And again, with having uh, my abilities recharging more quickly. It allows me to use my jetpack more. You can even use the rocket more. And so you can do some pretty cool things like that. It, it, this is just fun. This is what I wanted the game to be. I wanted it to be enjoyable and a good time. And when you're playing it like this, it's a lot of fun. If they could have just had the profile separate, where you could still be ranking up and getting star cards at a reasonable rate, then I wouldn't have had any real issue with this. This flame, uh, excuse me, can't speak. This flamethrower guy is pretty cool too. The incinerator. My thought here is EA looks at uh, Activision's latest Call of Duty and says, "Huh, World War II, and they've got flamethrowers. We need a flamethrower too." I don't remember. Was there a flamethrower in the first uh, Battlefront? Okay, we only have 10 kills left. I'm going to go ahead and let myself get killed here. Come on, guys. Let's go. Just kill me. This guy's got a ton of health. You guys seriously can't kill me? Well, I was going to let him kill me and pick one of the, uh, the better heroes, but whatever. You guys get the idea. That mode's a lot of fun. The classic Team Deathmatch mode's a lot of fun. More credits available in two hours. They just sit there and just keep reminding you. And it just makes for... I would almost have preferred that they just took it out of this mode and had everything unlocked like you see in a lot of the Call of Duty titles when you're playing against the AI. Everything's unlocked for you and you get to play around with it, try it out, and whatnot. Here, they couldn't even do that. Um, one of the things EA has said is things like these challenges here. Oh, well, you can earn credits from the challenges. There's tons of ways to earn credits in the game. These challenges are one-time thing, which means in very short order, you'll have already unlocked all of them, earned the credits, gotten a couple of crates, 
and that's it. The only way you'll be able to earn credits then is PvP, waiting for the time lock on the arcade mode, or of course, microtransactions, which we all know they're going to turn right back on as soon as everybody buys the game for the holidays, and then it's going to go right back to the way they originally planned it. Now that they've got all the journalistic monkeys off their back, you know, so to speak, it's going to be right back to the way it was. So, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for this video. Bottom line takeaway here is, if you are like me, and you are interested in this mode for arcade mode only, if you can play this and forget about all of this right here, all this, because you got to understand, when you go in here for every single character, let's see, You've got all these cards to unlock for every character. But there's not just that. No, no, no. You've also got the ability to... Let's see if I can show you. To upgrade these cards, too. Okay? Which you need currency... Which you need these... Um, I forget. They've got a special name for it. Uh, but, yeah, you need that, too. And the best way to get that's in crates as well. Uh, and then, on top of that, you can upgrade your weapon. Well, guess what? Your weapon upgrades can only come from online play. That's it. So you're not going to be able to play with these unless you play online. So if you want to use the cool uh, these the, the, the cool blaster rifles, that requires 500 heavy kills in PvP. Um, let's see, what else? And for the heroes, same thing. Guess what? They've got, they've got cards too. They don't just have cards, they've got changes of appearance. Yep. And they've got emotes and victory poses and everything. And all of this stuff is tied to these loot boxes that's going to take you eight days of arcade mode play to unlock one loot crate. I can't even tell you how many loot crates it would take if you got no duplicates of any kind uh, to unlock all this stuff. It's just, it's ridiculous. So if you can forget about that and just enjoy playing with the vanilla, what you get out of the box, no upgrades and you can play arcade mode and not worry about any upgrades, even then it's a tough sell at $60. I'd say it's worth probably about $20 at that point because battle scenarios are a total throwaway and you can't tweak them once you've played them. So once you've played them, they're done and they're not that much fun anyway. Tutorial, bruh. And then custom arcade mode, you got two modes with seven maps. Yes, you can tweak those two modes pretty heavily, but it's two modes on seven maps and they are small maps. Um, I have not found a way yet to do the um, the Galactic Assault. Let's see. Because if you click play mode, it just automatically starts putting you into an online queue. So these modes here, I have not found any way to um, include bots in those. I don't think there is there isn't any. So yeah, if you if you're wanting this just for arcade mode, go into it knowing what you're not going to be able to get a hold of, what you're going to have to face if you're wanting to unlock stuff, if you can go in and just play it as is, vanilla, without worrying about the star cards. I mean, you're not going to need the star cards in order to, to defeat the enemy AI. You're not. You're, you're going to be able to, to tweak that mode so that you can play it and enjoy yourself without having to be decked out completely. Uh, if you're the kind of person who cannot help yourself but feel upset and frustrated inside that I'm playing this and I'm getting drip fed just enough to keep reminding me that, um, you know, I, I could be getting loot crates faster online, I wouldn't get it. If you're going to get it and just have it to just play it, I'd say it's worth $20 if you're not worried about any of the unlocks. If you're interested in the arcade mode and the story mode, it's worth $30. Story mode's very throwaway for me. It's very beautiful but very shallow. i didn't really care for it. Uh, what I was seeing and didn't even bother with it. I read enough reviews on it to know that it wasn't anything that really interested me. I'd rather play Wolfenstein 2 or some other game for the story mode. Um, if you're getting it to play PvP, arcade mode, story mode, yeah, I guess it's worth the $60. Um, I've played some of the online and it's okay. It's just okay. It's just, you're constantly reminded by other players. They even show you when you get killed what star cards that person had turned on. So, I know, I think they did that in the first game too, but now it's even a bigger deal because you're like, oh man, that, I shot that dude like five times. Oh, okay, so he had increased health and blah, 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 and everything else, and his weapon was boosted and, you know, whatever. You're just going to be, it's in your face at every turn. 
So just just know that, guys. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any other questions on this or anything I can clarify, just let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions I can, especially if it's going to save you money at my loss could be hopefully your gain. So thank you again. I look forward so much to seeing all of you guys on the next episode. And until then, game on, everyone. Bye-bye.